Welcome back to the pajama party. Welcome back to the pajama party. A pox perspective is what we're gonna see tonight. Welcome back to the pajama party. Welcome back to the pajama party. A pox perspective is what we're gonna see tonight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let the shoulder work. Here we go. Yeah, to be the pajama party now listen i'm gonna be very very transparent with you i got a headache the size of tejas and i can say that because i live in texas okay i have a headache and <laughs> the energy is not there okay so i'm gonna give it to you straight i'm gonna give it to you fast and hard and then we're gonna go on about our ways okay Maybe not that fast, maybe not that hard, because I don't, the aggression is not there. So gentle, snails paced, slowly but surely, okay? Slowly but surely. So hello, friends. Welcome back tonight. I hope you've been well. I hope that you're having a great week. This is the season finale. Yay! We are at another season finale of A Pox Perspective. Uh, and then after this, you know, I will take my 10-week break from this. I know, I know. I'm going to miss you too. I'm going to miss every last one of you. All right. But until you see me again, know that I have other things going on, which I'll talk about towards the end. Okay. So the woman of the week, woman of the week, her name is Lisa Gelopter. All right. Okay. She was born in 1971. She's still alive. All right. This lady is like incognito because her background and like other information about her is just very amiss. All right. But her father was from Poland. He was Jewish. Her mother was from the Caribbean. So she's black. So this lady is a black lady, you know, me, but she black. Um, the reason why I want to talk about her is because I did not know this, but she is the reason that, like, you know how you do them little gifs and stuff? You know, when you be sending your friends them gifs and things like that. Gifs, gifs, I call them gifs, fight me on it. But when you send those things to your friends, yes, she is the creator of that. Like, creator of the technology of the animation feature that allows us to make those delicious, sweet things. Yes. So, she... She... Where is it at? She got her, are you serious? Here we go. Yeah. She got her computer science degree when she went to college, okay? She was the digital officer for BET. She worked with Shockwave, all right? She's worked with Hulu, like, um, okay, yeah, chief digital officer for BET. Yes, but she's worked with Hulu too. And I'm sitting here thinking like, we'll make these moves then. But yes, yeah, she's very smart, okay? And she's still very much alive and she's still out here doing her thing so shout out to you miss lisa thank you so much for helping us make those gifs because i'd be tearing my friend up with them do you hear me okay half of our conversation can literally be that and neither one of us will feel bad about it <laughs> sit in the corner with me okay so, I really just want to staple this little section in here right now and say 
So I wanted to ask you this question and I'm going to title this episode, what's your next move? Like where you can see yourself going in life right now, like this next journey that you are on, what is your next move? Tell me that. And then if it's something where like you really can't tell it because you just rather move it out and walk it out before you like reveal your plans, that's okay. I get that. I understand that. But I guess the question is, do you know what your next move is? Do you know how you're going to keep it moving? With that, the discussion for this sit in the corner with me is truly keep it moving. Um, One question that I asked on the Real Bible Stories that I think you should definitely go check out and watch. Because uh, I also tell you about a dream that kind of just, it threw me for a loop last week when I was having it. And hello, the father like literally had to be gentle on my mental for me because y'all... I be asking for the Lord to take me in deep waters. And then when he do, I be like, come wait a minute, Jesus. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me be like Jonah for a second. But no, um, one thing I've, the Lord asked me and I've asked people is, what did you learn in this season of your life? Like up until thus far, what you've currently gone through, if you can tell that you're at the end of a season, maybe you're starting a season or maybe you're in the middle of a season what is it that you've had to learn? What is what is the lesson you've learned? What has the Lord revealed and shown to you? And so with that being said, because I list a lot of things, but I guess the main thing I feel like the Lord has shown me is I am enough the way that I am. You know, I am enough. He is delighted in me. I don't have to try harder. I don't have to be better than the next person. I don't have to get like gold stars on everything I do. I just need to be Sama. I just need to be his child. I just need to obey his commandment, which is to love him first and foremost and to love my neighbors. Those are literally the only two commandments we have in this life. And, you know, new commandments under the new covenant. And so... You know, what is it that you learn? And with that being said, with me learning that, I have had to learn how to keep it moving and how to keep going. You know, like I was saying, I'm, I I keep saying I'm pretty sure I put it on here because I don't really know what episodes that I put things on here for. And I just don't feel, I don't think that I'm ever going to want to go and look back over every video. And I might, you know, but to cut out and edit out, I, anywho's. The point is, the point is, because I, I will watch myself. That's not my point being, okay, follow me here. Because sorry, it's the headache. I promise. I have said before, you know, but I've had people walk away from me. People that kind of shocked me. I did not expect my support system to deplete the way it has. I did not expect as many people to reveal their true natures as they have. I assumed at face value, people who I was dealing with, with was who they claimed to be. And I've had to learn that not everybody's going to tell you the truth about who they are. You know, I have learned that you're going to have to learn how to cheer for yourself and you're going to have to learn how to keep your head up, even when people neglect you and even when they turn away from you and they make you seem like you're just discarded or your dreams are not important or your ideas are not special. You have to keep going despite all of that, because first of all, they're not the ones who made you. God made you and God wrote your life. So of course, only God knows how it's going to turn out. But if you enable people to tell you what you are capable of, what you're not capable of, what you can and can't do, if you will waver when people won't clap for you, then you're not going to be able to stay in this race because people are not going to always clap for you. There's going to be a lot of haters wearing smiles and you think that they're clapping for you and they're really just fronting. And you have to trust God and know that even in the midst of all of that faking and shaking, you just got to keep going. I don't ever want to sit up here and make it seem like I have all the answers because by far I am still learning how to get better at all it is at this thing called life at bearing my soul and being vulnerable. Some days are better than others. But what I have learned above all else is that you got to keep going. You got to keep moving. You know, if I would have stopped drawing and doing things that I love and like making videos and making beats, if I would have stopped that the first time I only got one like, which was from my best friend, 
I wouldn't be here now. You know, I have seen and truly beheld the Lord transform things in my life after time, after patience, after practice, you know. And I I heard from a pastor, I heard from somebody, people will clap for you when other people clap for you. But if you're unpopular and if you're a loner, they won't clap for you. And that's okay. That's okay that they don't clap because the Lord is clapping for you and because the Lord sees you and because the Lord knows you are doing great and you are doing wonderful. So even if you feel like you are in a season where you're alone and like friends are far and few and there's nobody you can depend on, that's perfect because that's where God can show you you didn't even need them. You just needed him, his love, his grace, his sovereignty, because he's not going to leave you nor forsake you. And he that started a good work in you, he's going to finish it. So this is my reminder to you to just stay encouraged and keep going and reach for your dreams. There is no dream too big. There is no dream impossible because we serve a God who is the God of impossible. You know, he will take care of you. If he laid it on your heart, don't count yourself out and say, oh, I can't do it. And, oh, I'm not going to be there. Because, okay, maybe right now, maybe today you can't do it. But if you keep working at it, if you keep practicing, if you keep believing in the Lord, in yourself, you know, because first of all, I say believe in yourself, not because I think that we should believe in ourselves more than God, but you have to believe in yourself enough to know that you can do this, okay? And whatever you can't do is because God is doing it. And that's where you believe in him and let his grace and his mercy take care of the rest. But, you know, know that you're talented and know that whatever it is you want to reach for, you can reach for it because you can and will do this, okay? And if nobody else has told you, I believe in you. And I hope that you are truly reaching for the stars. And I hope that you truly get everything out of this life that you want because you deserve it. You deserve the happiness. You deserve the good times. You deserve reaching your end goal and seeing what your hard work and your sweat and labor has done for you. So just be encouraged on today to keep going. And even if you feel alone, know that you're looking at somebody who's been right there with you. And every day is not the best, but there is some beautiful moments in being by yourself. And when you are by yourself and those noises are finally calmed down, you truly learn what it is to be alive. You do learn, you do learn, you learn true concepts in life. You learn what true friendship is. You learn what true love is. You learn what peace is. You learn what happiness is. You just learn how to keep going and how to be tenacious and how to be your best self. And you learn that above all else, if God is with you and truly for you, it doesn't matter how people talk about you or how they try to downcast you. Because if he is for you, who can be against you? And he will right every wrong concerning you. And yes, I am happy to report if people are dogging you out and trying to walk you, he will lift you up and show them exactly who his child is. So be encouraged on today. White team, you got this. You can do this. I believe in you. Thank you to you, man. All right, my friends. So, like I said, I I the hypeness is kind of drawing down on me because of this headache, and I'm I'm really trying to give it to you. Okay, the best way that I can give it to you. Ouch. Okay. So, one thing I wanted to know is because okay, so you know I've been telling I've been getting my gains on right. Hopefully, when you see me getting ten more weeks, like. I don't know. I don't know. Hopefully, you know, we'll be more slim. Maybe the neck will be a little bit longer. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Just, you know. <laughs> Anyways, you know, I've been getting my games in, you know, been working out faithfully, dutifully. It's about to be a year in like two weeks that I've worked it out consistently for a year. 
I can't believe that. Okay, nobody in my family, I'm pretty sure they're still like appalled because this is a new high for me. Okay, I am not one that is going to work out. I am not one that is going to initiate a workout. So the fact that the Lord touched me and changed that in me, truly there is a God because baby, I... I was going to eat my life away. That sounds so horrible to say, but I was. But anywho, been working out, okay? We are still eating our life away, but we're burning it off the next day. So it's a little bit better, okay? Now I don't feel guilty about like shoving so much food in my mouth because I know I'm going to cry thrive and survive the next day to get it off okay so this is a psa to enjoy your life eat the foods you want to because when you get older you're not going to always be able to eat those honey buns enjoy them while you're young now and while you have the metabolism to burn it off just make sure you're burning it off okay in some form of fashion get those get those gains in get those gains in get them in get those gains in get them in point being okay one thing I wanted to get better at is my cardio. Y'all, I can lift a weight and then try to dance for two minutes and be about to faint because I'm just so out of breath. And so one thing I was like, well, let me start, you know, jogging a mile. Okay, now it's been like half a mile. I would jog half a mile and walk the other half of the mile and then be done. But my mom was blessed with the elliptical and she was like, you can get on the elliptical and tire your pretty little head out. So that's what I've been doing. You know, in the morning times, I get on the elliptical, wear myself out. But I was telling her, I did not know why it was that I was wearing myself out on this elliptical. I'm talking about like... I've been wanting to get in like my two miles and my 32 minutes because that's how long it takes me. Don't come for me. Small victories over here. But, you know, within 32 minutes, not saying I'll be right at a mile, but up in there, I'll be done did like a mile, you know, or not a mile, two miles, uh, 2.2 miles. And so, you know, I had been... And since I do this as soon as I wake up, I'm talking about, you know, the bare minimum that I have in me is water. And so, you know, some days I get a little lightheaded and she's like, you know, you can get burnt out from that, right? And so this is also another PSA work out just to feel good. You don't have to, you don't have to feel like you got to run five hours every day for you to get the weight off. It's going to come off. Okay. Be gentle on your mental. Be, be nice to yourself. As long as you're pushing something, be happy that you're pushing something. And so when I got to thinking about it, I realized really why it is that I do it. So I'm going to take y'all down memory lane. I don't know if y'all gym teacher was like this but if so come sit in the corner with me again so I had this gym teacher when I was in the sixth fifth and sixth grade had this coach he used to make us run right and so like um he used to want us to run four laps in 12 minutes now, if you finished up all four laps in 12 minutes, you got to chill out for the rest of the class. Like you, you didn't have to do nothing else with your life. You were just there. Me, a big one. <laughs> I never could get it in the 12 minutes. And even though I wasn't that big, I really truly was not that big in school. But it was more or less of, I just didn't have the cardio for it. I didn't have the stamina. I, the running in general, I hate running. I've never been a fan of running. The only time I can actively remember running from my life is when a pit bull was chasing me and another old friend of mine. And I didn't want to get chewed up, so I ran. But, you know, outside of that, we are not one that's going to run for anything, okay? A brisk walk is what you will get. But anywho, I remember one time and this is not the only time it happened y'all but one time I was walking with my friends and like we had started off running or whatever right and you know the fast people they're taking off they're like shoom 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 they're getting it together you know what I'm saying and then us the slow people we ran for like half of the first lap and we're just done for I'm talking about sweat drenched oh it was a thing but I remember I would see people cut across so like if we're going in this big circle right people would cut across if the coach wasn't looking and like 
they get done faster. And y'all, every time, every time I tried it, I got caught. I could count on one hand. It was twice where I got away with cutting that heel. I was too slow. I was either too slow or he was coming out. I'm like, you've been in the building for 45 minutes. And now all of a sudden that I want to take my butt across this field. Here you are just appearing before me. Y'all, it was rough. It was rough. I don't think I ever, I, like I say, I want to say at most twice, I got to sit down. Outside of that, I was never one to finish her mile, okay? And because if you didn't finish your mile in 12 minutes, you had to do like an extra lap, I believe, or extra two laps. <laughs> We was always doing extra laps, all right? And it just became a point where we would just walk, lazily walk around the circle and do nothing and just talk amongst each other because we knew we were not finishing it. And now to think about it, I don't even know why that was so important. And I guess back then they were trying to, I believe they were trying to see like who was good and who could be in like track and field, you know, and recruit them like that. And who knows, maybe he just did it because he wanted to kill some time. Like if he made us do that, you know, and if he made us like run, that was our exercise and he didn't have to worry about doing nothing else with us. But y'all, I, so now when I get on that elliptical, I'm trying to burn and pass out within 12 minutes because I feel like I still am that little girl trying to show her coach that she can get all four laps in and in a minute we still ain't there <laughs> not in 12 minutes okay it'll take me like it'll take me a good 14 minutes to do a lap but once again i ain't feeling the smoke no more okay because i'm a grown lady all right and as long as i'm moving and grooving to me it is counted well because i will not and when i realized that that's what it was i was like you really you gotta let the past go okay don't be out here trying to burn yourself out because your coach didn't let you sit down but i'm just curious did anybody else have that going on i only say that too because i came from like a small town you know very small town if you remember so um i just feel like a bunch of things that i went through common kids didn't really go through that in cities or other countries smaller countries but i could be i could be very wrong because me and a friend, like I said, we paired a little, a little bit too hard. Except for the teachers. Her teachers wasn't out here wild and like mine was out here wild. And I was just like, y'all are a different type of beast. J Jasper, get it together. Yeah, like y'all teachers was off the deep end. But yes, I want to know, were you out there trying to make it? Did you run off for your left? Did you cut across too? I used to be so mad that people were so fast and like cutting corners and like just sitting there doing nothing because that's all I wanted to do. But now reminiscing back on it, it honestly was not that bad to walk those laps. It was just hot out there. It was hot. I was sweaty. Had to finish them up before we went to the next class. It was, it was tedious. All right. That's all that it was. So let me know. Let me know. Clothes uh, <laughs> and bullets. I know. I listen. I don't want to talk to y'all about an anime husband. Really briefly, if I had to give you one. Kayo Judo will forever reign in my heart, okay? I know technically I'm a widow. Um, that's all I'm gonna say if you ain't watched the anime. Hey, okay, I don't wanna spoil it, you know, so just know that Kayo Judo was, is my husband in Demon Slayer. It was gonna be Tengen, but Tengen already got a lot of wives, okay? And I just, I don't wanna share, okay? Cause sir, you're doing too much. And this is gonna sound equally bad, but if I can't have Kayo Judo, okay, the dad that works just as fine. <laughs> oh, I, hey, them G's is strong. That's all I want to say. But yes, that is my anime husband for the week. Um, really, Kyle Judo, his character, first of all, flames, fire, anything with it, I'm here for it. There's a dude named Fuegolion and um, uh, Black Clover that we will get to eventually. Fire Lion, love him. It, 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 the fire and the lion was enough for me to love him but <laughs> this dude Kyle Jiro, he is sweet 
He is kind, all right? He's there for his friends, and he's a beast. Okay, he's a little dorky. I ain't gonna lie. Kyle Judo, he a little bit on the dork side. The way he was laughing and eating, I'm like, baby, you're precious. But I don't know. I'm soft for stuff like that. Every time I saw his face on the screen, I was like, I don't care about your bushy eyebrows. They're beautiful to me, okay? I had a friend, she was like, no. And I was like, yes, all of it, yes. But anywho's, that is my husband. I die on this hill that is my anime husband though in demon slayer now to be fair hear me out hotaru i'm just saying okay he was diligent for tanjiro he was like i and anybody who's going to be that dedicated and that diligent to you deserves to be loved okay because he was you know that song work my fingers to the bone he was working his fingers to the bone for Tanjiro's blade. And like, you were getting abused. You literally went through the ringer, blood, sweat, and tears, BTS reference, and you still out here surviving and thriving. <laughs> so that's my new baby. I, you know, I, Kyle Judo was the husband, all right? He, he was the husband, so that's not a lot. So I guess technically, like, I got two husbands. <laughs> There you go. I forget, how could I forget about that beautiful thing? But yes, so let me know who's your husband in Demon Slayer. Listen, age appropriate answers only because if any of y'all go to jail, it's not going to be on me. I hope you got some pen names, okay? And I just hope that you're not going to do it. Don't do it to me. <laughs> Don't do it. Let them kids stay kids. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. But if you are also younger and you're like, listen, we the same age, then who, who am I? I don't know. You could be the same age and you don't need to be thinking about marriage anyway. You need to wait until <laughs> you're older to be thinking about marriage. But <laughs> friends, okay. Your four closing bullets. Number one, treasure yourself more. Believe in yourself. Okay, I'm trying to drill it into you as much as I can, but be gentle on your mental. Believe in yourself. Believe that you got this and that you're equipped with everything you need to go on this journey. And know that if the Lord goes before you truly, man, he's not going to fail you. All right, you can do this. You can do this. You can do this. Please treasure yourself more. You're so beautiful inside and out. And if people don't take time to notice you and notice what you have to bring to the table in your personalities, then they don't deserve you. If they can't see how wonderful you are, how dorky you may be, how goofy you may be, you know, like your little quirks. If they can't see that and appreciate that and appreciate you, Forget them people, okay? Come sit over here with real G's like me. We'll take care of you. <laughs> Number two, remember who you are. Where you come from, your background, all of that stuff defines you. You don't have to dwell on it. You don't have to dwell on your past, but remember who you are, you know? Before you got so caught up in the hype and before like the attention overtook you, who are you? When you're sitting alone at nighttime, when you're by yourself, when there's no lights on, when the party's over, who are you? You need to find that person and you need to remember it because that is your true self and that is the person that is gonna drive you. Your most authentic self is your best self. So just remember it and don't let people try to staple labels on you and try to tell you who you are. No, cause they don't get to tell you who you are. You tell them who you are. Number three, stay on the move, man. Keep going. Excuse me. Whatever it is you're finding your hand at, whatever it is you want to do, if you feel like you're hitting a brick wall, take a few steps back, take a few deep breaths, but then keep going. Pick that brush back up, you know, pick that paint back up, pick those scissors back up, whatever it is you find yourself doing. Pick it back up and keep going. Don't give up on it, even when it's hard, even when it seems tedious, even when the experience may be lackluster, keep going because it is working something out for your good and the Lord, the Lord will make a way for you, okay? Just believe it, just trust him. He will always make a way for you in every season, in every opportunity. The Lord is making a way for his baby. And last one, 
Hold on to God, especially when it's hard, especially when it feels like life is crumbling, all right? There are rocks in the cracks and you're like, why is the earth shaking around me? Like I just knew we were on dry level ground. Even when you're not, and even when things are topsy-turvy, and even when there's a storm, and you feel like all you're seeing is the waves, remember, there is a man who calms the storm, and his name is Jesus. There is somebody who fights your battle. He is your strength. And what I love so much about remembering, truly remembering who God is, he's overcome the world. He has already had the victory. Everything that the Lord has ever said would happen has happened. So if he says that he has the victory he has the victory over your life over this entire world so please do not be discouraged and please don't give up on God because he won't give up on you and he's ever present and he's always there with you and I'm gonna keep reminding you that he loves you and that he sees you because it is so true when you go through hard seasons in life there's nobody else who will get you through it other than God. There's no strength outside of God. There's no remedy outside of him. I've tried it. There's no escape for him. There's nobody that can feel you like Jesus. So let him be your anchor and hold on to his hand. And if you have to tell him like, God, I am upset or like, God, I don't understand what it is. You know, even when you don't understand him and even when like dark nights are dark and you feel rageful, let him know how you feel. He can handle your emotions. He will show I like to say show himself approved, but he doesn't show, he doesn't have to prove anything to us, but he will answer you and he will give you clarifications and on the things and the matters that he don't, trust his peace and reassurance enough to let it go and just let it be. But the things that you need to know, God is going to reveal them to you. So yes, trust him, believe in him, man, that is your best friend. He is your everything and he he won't let you down just be encouraged when other people turn away from you and when other people try to make it seem like you're lacking or you're not enough you have a man who sees you and you're more than enough for him and whatever you can't cover his grace and his mercy covers for your life so be encouraged i'm so glad that you guys have joined me for another night thank you for being here with me and like i say i will be going away for 10 weeks from this podcast as well as the real papa stories but the great things i draw will start back up for 10 weeks and i will be there and so while i'm working on that series you know i will have a lot of more things i want to do via TikTok, okay, via face paint content. So please make sure you check out Rambles and Makeup. And please, if you wanna see edits and photo edits and video edits and just different things I try my hand at, chaotic karaoke, all of that jazz is on my TikTok at Dohi Summer and on my Instagram at Dohi Summer. I did a collaboration with the best friend Sugar Cookie for uh, Dia de los Muertos. You can go check that out, Muertos. There we go. Get it together, okay? Because that's that's not the family right there. I got to represent. But you can go check that out. Go check out her shop as well. She has some amazing stuff. And yeah, guys, I hope it's, it's going to be 10 weeks. I'm acting like it's going to be 10 years. But I don't know. I just, I don't know where God's taking me and what I'm going to do in this next season of my life. So I really just want to reassure you and love on you and remind you that it is all well and that everything is going to be peaches and greens. So please kiss me with that like button. And like I said, sorry, my mental, not my mental, but my emotional drive is like right here. Cause this headache is like, no, 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 no way. No, 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 no way. I'm going away from you. <laughs> so yes friends please kiss me with the like button please come in and tell me how you're gonna keep it moving or if you don't want to answer that tell me what it is you've learned in this season in your life tell me who your husband is just for demon slayer now all right and yeah guys just be blessed please subscribe please turn on the bells for when i post more and be blessed man be wonderful be great Go out every day expecting something amazing to happen. Hold your head up. Remember who you are. You are chosen. You are seen. You are loved. You are special. And above all, you are enough. Please remind yourself that on today, you are enough. Be gentle on your mental. 
love on yourself. But my friends, it has been a pleasure rocking with you as always. And until we meet again, please do always remember that the Lord does love and bless you. May he keep you. I believe in you. And I love you as well. The Lord loves you. Yes, and I love you. And I hope that wherever you are, wherever you are and whenever you listen to this and view this you have an incredible day an amazing night and since i won't see you here on the podcast until after no i mean after christmas happy holidays happy thanksgiving merry christmas jesus is the reason for the season feliz navidad and happy new year friends we will be in 2024 when i get back to you buy a podcast (laughs) so i love you guys i love you i love you i love you and yeah goodbye guys